Good evening and welcome. Thanks for joining us this evening. I'm here with Mrs. Renee Taylor um, and between the both of us, Renee is going to be working answering some questions in the chat. If you have any questions, you can write them in there and I will do a bit of a presentation and then we'll have time for some other questions at the end. So hopefully it goes well and you can all hear and if you do have things that crop up, please feel free to type them in the chat. So my name, if you don't know me, is Natalie Fairfax, and I'm the head of the IB here. And so that basically means I look after the middle years program as well as the diploma program. So the aims for tonight is really for you to get an overview of what the diploma program is, to hear some of the ways that Marici College has implemented the diploma and how that might differ from some other schools and some benefits of doing a diploma program. So in terms of an IB philosophy, the IB is a very global program. It's got a lot of common things that good schools will do, but it's also got a very international focus. So in terms of what is it, some people say to me, I, you know, what is the diploma? It's actually an academically challenging and pre-university program it's been uh, described as being. And the reason it's been described as a pre-university program is because it actually does a really good job of preparing students for university entry and being successful, not just to get in, but to be successful in their studies. It's a two-year program for students. The IB advertised it for students aged 16 to 19, um, or at Marici is for students in their senior years in years 11 and 12. And it's a very respected program um, in leading universities. So you can see the IB mission statement on the screen there and also some of the key things that make the IB really different. And there are four things in all IB programs, whether it's the middle years or the primary years or the diploma that are very common. So one of them is international mindedness. The IB learner profile, which is a set of 10 attributes that we hope to kind of encourage students to develop. It's a bit like character education. They have broad, balanced, conceptual and connected curriculum. So it looks at big ideas in education and has a focus on approaches to teaching and learning, looking at the skills we need to be learners, not just the content. So the aim of all IB programmes is to develop internationally minded people who recognise their common humanity and shared guardianship of the planet. And central to this is international mindedness. So. I just thought I'd share with you some of the data because often um, students as well as uh, prospective parents are really interested to know what is going on with the diploma around Australia. So we've had a really big growth in schools signing up to be um, diploma schools and Australia has 67 schools um, and I'll talk a little bit more about how the IB is actually assessed but the main score that students receive at the end of the two year program is out of 45. And the average for students in Australia was a pass rate of 34 out of 45 um, with 92% of students passing. And I'll talk about what it means to pass a diploma as well. And then you can see some of the other Australasia figures there. So students in Australia essentially do better than other students globally in the IB. So we've got a very strong tradition of the IB performance. And I think that's testament to the Australian curriculum, the general standard of teaching and learning in Australia generally. So what is the diploma program? I've kind of mentioned a couple of things and I guess how is it similar and different to the middle years program? So we often, we offer Amrichi the middle years program for all students in year seven to 10. And that is a great preparation for students studying at diploma level as well. So things that I've mentioned already, like approaches to learning, those skills will help students continue in their skill development in the diploma program. And the IB's commissioned some research to see that there is actually um, an improved performance in the diploma program for students that have studied the MYP. So this is one of the reasons why we wanted to do both programs because it's great preparation. So Different to the MYP, the middle years program for the seven to 10 is a framework and we deliver the Australian curriculum. At diploma level, it's a taught curriculum. The IB specify a list of content that we are required to teach. Um, and there are some flexibility things within that. So we can choose examples or case studies. Um, the teacher can make that, that decision, but there is a list of outcomes for each subject area. And that's quite different to the middle years. 
it is a two-year program. We can't condense it. It's against the IB philosophy. Um, it is mostly an exam-based system. Um, there is lots of inquiry within the courses and there is um, an internal assessment, which is basically a coursework component that students um, complete in each subject area. But they do, similar to the HSC, complete exams at the end of a two-year body of knowledge and there may be a couple of papers for each subject area. These are externally assessed, which I think is one of the really, I guess one of the positive things about the IB diploma, because it's not based on any preconceptions that of teachers have of students. It is blind marked and the examiners have no idea whose papers they're seeing. So we have that kind of standard, um, I guess protocols put in place to make sure that students are achieving two of that global standard. As a school, we also are, I'm going to say inspected, but it's not really like an inspection, but we are checked up on that we are doing the right thing, and especially at the diploma program. With the examinations, we may get people popping in to check that we are administering them under the right conditions. So that provides a level of quality assurance to you as families that when we are delivering the diploma, you are getting a global standard. One of the really excellent things, I think, is the professional development that is mandatory in the diploma program. So all teachers who deliver IB diploma courses have had to go very specific IB certified training before they can teach the subjects. So you can rest assured that they haven't, our teachers haven't just jumped in the classroom hoping that they can deliver you some content um, without that, that training. Um, and as I said, it is a, a senior level curriculum uh, that can help prepare students for university. So some of the benefits, there's lots of benefits. Um, it is seemed a very academic challenge. It's not just for gifted students or very high achieving students, um, but it does have a challenge. And lots of that is to do with the style of learning um, that is required in the classroom because it's very, um, lots of collaboration. There's lots of group data that needs to be collected for different subjects and things like that. But one of the great things about the diploma is it is very um, holistic and it's very broad education. So one of the reasons often students will choose a diploma program compared to the local curriculum, which we call the BSSS or the Board of Senior Secondary Studies. One of those reasons is because students um, have to choose one subject from each of the different subject groups. And I'll talk to you a bit about what those subject offerings are. So they're forced to have a broad range of subjects. It is possible in the local curriculum to choose a range of subjects as well but um, it, the local curriculum also allows for a bit more of specialization. It's a very good option for students that don't have a clear understanding of what they want to do or where they want to go in terms of university courses. So if that's your daughter and you're sitting there thinking, and, and when I presented to the year 10 cohort, um, I think it was yesterday, Monday, Monday, it was a long week so far. Um, they were really positive about the fact that lots of them didn't know what they wanted to do and they thought that this would be a good fit for them. So that's definitely one of the, the kind of benefits for that. So in terms of requirements, there are lots of requirements for uh, the IB. I've bit, done a bit of a sort of snapshot here for you. So on this slide, you can see, we call this um, the program model and you've got six academic areas and students choose one subject from each area with the exception of the arts. I don't know why, I often get asked, why is it the arts that is the kind of subject area that you can swap out? I don't know, that's just the decision the IB's made. Um, but group six, the arts area, you can choose an extra subject from one of the other subject groups, except for maths, because the math content is very similar depending on the pathway, because they've just rewritten the math courses. So the arts area, you might do an extra science. So you can do a double science, for example. So there are usually three subjects taken at higher level. A uh, higher level is slightly harder content and more teaching hours. So you can see that I've listed that higher level subjects you do for 240 hours across the two years. That is different to the local curriculum. So the BSSS course is generally around 220. 
Um, so there is about a 20 hour difference, but all of those courses are that requirement for time. And the IB only has three of those subjects that have to be done in terms of that number of hours. Some students may well find they would like to do four subjects at higher level, um, but there are a few constraints around that and Marici, which I'll go into as well. The other subjects are taken at standard level, and you can see there that's only 150 hours over the two years. Now we have timetabled more face-to-face -face time in areas that students benefit from a little extra time in, like maths is often an area that students require a bit more support and help. So we actually have more than the 150 hours on the timetable and students may well find they get release time in some subjects um, where maybe they are standard level and they don't need the full time allocation. There is a core element as well as the subjects. And this is one of the really exciting things I think about the IB diploma program that students often struggle with as well as enjoy the most. And they're often referred to things that they're really proud about. So I've listed the acronyms there, but EE stands for the extended essay. And I'll go into what that looks like later. CAS, which is creativity, activity, and service, which is a complete or not complete and TOK is theory of knowledge. And that is a course that students do that um, is a requirement in completion of their diploma. Oh. Now, I'm not gonna read through these, but I am just going to flag that I've got these two slides. There are a lot of conditions that students are required to obtain in order to be awarded the diploma. So lots of that is surrounding the number of points they need to pass. So students are graded in their subjects from one to seven and the points needed to pass are 24. When students don't pass, they don't, they don't exactly fail. They still get course scores or a score for each individual subject. But often when we talk about the diploma, that is only if they get point score of 24 or more. The reason I put these two slides in is because this presentation has been recorded and um, I will also put a link to the actual presentation in the next what's on. These are quite important um, conditions that students need to be aware of before deciding on an IB diploma journey, but 24 points is actually very achievable for most students. I, to get the high scores of 45 is very difficult, as you would see from the very first slide about the data and what students have achieved. Um, in Australia. So those are there for your reference if you feel you need to go back. So in terms of subjects, the IB does offer more than these subjects, but what we've done as a school is look at where our teachers um, have specific training. Um, we've also looked at where student demand is when we've done research to, before setting the courses up. This is what students have been in demand for. I've actually added something that's not in our handbook, which is social and cult cultural anthropology in group three. So as I said, there's six subject groups. Students choose one subject from each group with the exception of that group six for arts. Now with group three, because we are a Catholic school, we have to deliver, whether you're in the local curriculum or in the IB diploma, students have to do religious education of 110 hours across the two years. So we um, so that we can't add to students' workload, we've made the world religion a compulsory subject. It's a really broad course. It's very interesting. And I've got some information about what that course looks like. It is a world religion course, not just a Catholic perspective, um, but it is something that all students studying the diploma at Marici will be doing as a compulsory course. So I have listed those other subjects that fall in that group three that could be picked up in that group six instead and that are of a humanities nature. And that social and cultural anthropology has been added because some of the students, when I presented to them, said they really wanted to do sociology. And there isn't a sociology course, but the cultural and social anthropology course is very similar to the sociology. So that's why that's been put in, but you have you won't find it in our brochure at the moment. So if you'd like to know more, then get in touch with me because I think it's quite likely I might be teaching it myself, but I'm not sure yet. So I have to wait and see. Um, I hope so, because it'd be quite exciting. 
So language acquisition is an area of concern for some students. Some students love language learning, some students less so. It is compulsory, but different to the middle years, students can choose to pick up a different language. They don't have to continue with the language they've been learning already. So um, our current cohort, uh, three of them are doing online Spanish which at beginners level through our online provider, which I'll talk about as well. Uh, since they started, we actually have got Spanish teachers, so we can deliver that in-house as well as an option. We um, have also got Spanish as language B. So there's two well, I guess three different levels of languages. You've got ab initio, which is basically a beginner's course, language B standard level, which is pretty tough. It's, it's, it's a challenge, but that's for students who've got some language exposure um, already in that area. And high level in those languages tends to be engaging with literature. It's a very challenging course and students really only get admitted to those programs with the teacher recommendation. Um, in terms of the maths, I get a lot of questions about the maths um, pathways and I, I've got a couple of slides about the maths in particular later as well. So I mentioned about Pomoja and our online provider. Pomoja is um, authorised by the IB to deliver IB courses. We have used them when we have found that it suited students' timetables a bit more to have an online course and also to support subjects that maybe we didn't have somebody um, trained in um, for diploma. Because I mentioned that all of our teachers are actually IB diploma trained. There is a site-based coordinator and currently that is myself. So I have access to the online content and I would keep a check on behavior if their students haven't submitted things, if they are behind in their courses, and I would check in with the student and seeing how they're going. Um, they do have some what we call live lessons with an IB teacher online, so it doesn't fit into the normal timetable. And that's something we discuss with families as well if, if they are being offered a Pomoja online course. It's usually only in one subject, not any more than that. Um, and we as a school have made the decision that unless we have somebody who is a teacher in that subject, we aren't offering Pomoja online. The reason for that is they may not be diploma qualified, but if there is, for example, a Spanish teacher at the school, our students can still access that teacher and ask any kind of questions they might have that might be subject specific. So we've, we've kind of decided that as a school to make sure that we get the best um, for students and we can support them through that. So the Pomoja lessons do, um, and it's not uh, a requirement, lots of the time students can do all of their courses within the school timetable and we cannot offer them all of the subjects they want, but it does just give us an extra level of flexibility. So there are some of those lessons that don't necessarily align with our school timetable as well. So for example, the courses for Spanish this semester started, um, I think it was 10th of February, so a little bit later than the beginning of term. And sometimes they run a little bit into holidays as well. So something to bear in mind and I will discuss with students too in a bit more detail. So in terms of how a diploma programme is assessed, um, I've mentioned that it they are graded out of one to seven for each subject. So for example, in English, students will receive a number from one to seven, seven being the best and one being not so great. Those numbers represent descriptions of achievement. So you can see on the slide, I've given you a bit of a snapshot of what that looks like in a language and literature context. Each subject has those descriptions. Students generally, will sit exams, as I said, at the end of the year, two years, sorry, at the end of two years, with the exception of May for world religions. So sometimes there are some subjects that the IB offers that we're at what we call a November session school. So that means that generally our term ends in November of year 12. Some schools, um, that tends to be Northern Hemisphere, are a May session school. So their exams are mostly in May. But for world religions, because it's mostly a Northern Hemisphere subject, the exam for that is in May, um, which is great because it means they get one exam over and done with in the May of year 12. Italian is also in May. Um, 
if that's a subject that students wanted to choose as a diploma option as well. But everything else is in November, unless there is something unusual that we, your daughter has requested that I'd need to communicate with you about. But most standard class um, examinations are in the November session. So with the six subjects being scored out of seven, the potential for that is 42 points. The actual diploma is out of a total of 45. Three bonus points come from performance and success in the theory of knowledge class, as well as the extended essay. So those two components together form a potential of three points, which makes the overall total out of 45. I mentioned about CAS being creativity, activity, and service. That is um, a requirement for completion of the diploma, but it's not graded. It's either it's complete or it's not complete. And I'll show you what that looks like as well. There is an internal assessment component for all courses. And that is something that's completed in school that is usually assessed by the teacher, but then be, is sent to the IB for standardization and, and confirmation that the marks are appropriate. Um, and then they confirm our marking. So whilst it is internally assessed, it's actually still uh, verified by the IB. And during COVID, the IBs had to make a lot of changes to their examination processes. And one of those is some schools who have been unable to um, complete examinations due to lockdown. Um, they have actually made the internal assessment um, an externally marked component. So teachers have uploaded everything and sent it off to the IB and that has been externally assessed. Uh, so one thing about COVID, um, their IB has been very proactive in making sure that schools and students still receive support and help through that process where schools have had um, difficulty in attending um, classes and things like that. So we're really fortunate, um, touch wood, uh, that here at Marici we haven't suffered from that at all really. We haven't, I think we had about six weeks remote learning, but compared to other places we've been really fortunate. But the IB does have backup plans for things um, that go wrong. So there's a lot of text on this slide, but again, I'm hoping that after the presentation, you'll be able to go through um, and read through this in a bit more detail. Common things I'm asked about is, well, how does an IB diploma differ to our local curriculum, which is the Board of Secondary Studies? So you can travel overseas with our local curriculum. It's not that that is a barrier. You absolutely can go overseas with that qualification. But an IB diploma is recognised internationally. Often with the Canberra-based system, even across Australia, people are not familiar with our system. And so it means that universities have to work a bit harder, especially international ones, to work out what does that mean. And so the IB diploma offers them almost like instant recognition of what a student can do. And because it is a rigorous program that has a lot of breadth and depth to it, this is really um, seen as an advantage by international universities and Australian universities as well. With the local curriculum, students can um, choose a very specialised pathway. So, for example, if your daughter is really interested in design and art subjects, they can choose three subjects in that area that they really, really love. With a diploma, as I've said already, they have to choose subjects from each area, which means that sometimes those specialist interests, they can't spend as much time doing um, those courses. So if your daughter has got a very big passion about something specific, then I would actually say I don't encourage her to choose the IB diploma and the BSSS will offer her lots more flexibility with her package. It is amazing preparation for university study. It does um, provide students with lots of the kind of skills needed. So the extended essay is a 4,000 word research report that students choose um, an area of personal interest based within their subject. And they work to put that together, which is often very similar to formal academic writing they will do at university. The downside for some students is the fact that it does rely, the diploma relies on external examinations. And that can 
put a bit of fear into some students, understandably. They think they're no good at exams. Well, what they forget sometimes is actually the local curriculum also has exams. Maybe not externally assessed with the um, exception of the AST for sort of tertiary level study. And I'm mostly talking about tertiary options here rather than accredited. I will point that out. There are lots of options in our local curriculum um, in terms of students who maybe want to do vocational qualifications or that want to study at an accredited level rather than a tertiary level. So whatever your daughter's interested in, there's a pathway here for her. Um, so most of these comparisons are between tertiary level study, which is preparation for university study and the diploma. So um, students in the local curriculum will sit what we call the AST or the advanced skills test, which is externally assessed. And they do get an ATAR, which is a score based on their subject performance, as well as the AST. The diploma students don't get an ATAR. They don't sit AST exams. What they do sit is those subject specific external examinations at the end of the two years. And um, as I said, most of the knowledge isn't actually assessed by teachers with the exception of the internal assessments. The IB students in Australia do get a converted score for UAC. So UAC is the um, university's admissions process that students go through to apply to uh, Australian universities. Some universities accept students based on their raw score out of 45. Lots of international um, universities will accept that raw score. But for comparative reasons, lots of the local universities are, and in Australia will use this ranking. And I guess when I presented to students, they were very excited about how well the IB score does rank in compared to um, like the ATAR that they could have got. So I'll go through that as well. Um, one of the, I guess, plus sides of the local curriculum is that if students aren't doing so well in a subject, they can swap things in and out of their package. So maybe they might swap into a different course, they might drop a subject, pick up a different subject. It's a bit more of a pick and mix type, I guess, offering. Um, the IB diploma, once you're in, you're in. Your subjects stay your subjects, which is good. It builds resilience in students. They don't get to just give up on things um, that they find hard. On the downside, they don't get to give up on things they find hard. So sometimes that, that can be a challenge for students. Uh, the diploma has this unique theory of knowledge course, which um, is one of the selling points. It's not a philosophy course, but it's a thinking about how we have come to our general shared knowledge and what does how do we create knowledge? And I've got some examples to share with you about that. One of the other key things that students have shared with me they really like, as well as the current students, is the fact that you don't get affected by your cohort's rank and ability in the diploma. With our local curriculum in tertiary packages, students are ranked in each subject. They have to compete with each other for first place, essentially. And the IB diploma, there is ranking that does go on behind the scenes in the IB diploma, but that's not at a school level, that's at an international level. Looking at spread of students' performance rather than individual students' positions um, within a school itself. It's not even scaled at a state or um, Australia-wide level. It's a lot bigger than that, which lots of students like that means that they can work together in their subjects. So um, the cohort that we've got are very, very tight as a community because they help each other with their learning and that's been really beneficial for them. So I guess why not the diploma? Because I think the diploma is great. It isn't for everybody. So as I said, if there are very specific subjects that your daughter's extremely passionate about, then I don't want to discourage their passion. And they should study what they're interested in and what they love, because if they love it, they tend to do better at it. If your daughter's really interested in vocational subjects, the IB diploma doesn't really have the time for additional courses. So one of the couple of the students asked me the other day, could they continue their vet certificates and things like sport and recreation in the senior level 
um, if they chose the diploma. And unfortunately, they can't. They could get a statement of attainment and then continue that at a local TAFE or something like that. So that is an option, but we can't fit it into the school timetable, unfortunately. One of the good things about the local curriculum is students start collecting their points as soon as the semester starts. So all of the assessment the students do can count towards their overall scores at the end of the semester and at the end of the two years. With the IB, it's a growth program. It's very much focused on practicing all the way along the two years, but you don't get anything that really counts until you do that piece of coursework or the external exams. So the idea being you kind of practice to get better. So you're great by the time you need to sit those exams. Um, but if your daughter likes the assurance of that ongoing assessment, that constant feedback, knowing that that's points in the bank almost, then the IB diploma doesn't offer that. We do support students with progress and we do lots of assessment, practice tests and things like that all the way along. But those points aren't actually counting for their final overall external qualification. If students don't want to study six subjects, generally students do, st do study six subjects in our local curriculum, but there are sometimes exceptions to that. Um, and sometimes they start with six and then may drop as the two years progresses. Um, and if your daughter, the thought of doing those six subjects is too much, then maybe the diploma program wouldn't be for you either. And those additional components, things like community service, being of service to others, it is a requirement um, of this program. It's not an onerous requirement usually, but it is extra. Um, and the theory of knowledge course, whilst is quite unique and exciting, it is extra. Timetabled, but extra. And so if your daughter um, is not managing, I guess, just generally with workload, then those extra components would be, would be hard. And so that might be some reasons not to choose the diploma program. I've just put a bit of a summary. I, I had to think about this slide actually, because I thought, what is it that we do here? Because it's, I've been kind of living the IB for a while now. Um, I really had to think what's different about what the IB is like at Marici compared to other schools. I think we are amazing value for money. Not that I'm trying to promote that we're the um, budget option as such, but a lot of IB schools, there is a huge cost that comes um, to schools to be an IB school with things like the required training for teachers. Um, and, and that's constant. It's not a one time only thing and we move on and, and we're ticked off. So the only cost that we actually pass on to families as an additional cost to be a diploma student compared to our local curriculum is for the IB examinations. Um, we charge the minimum kind of amount, the, just the actual cost, which is $840 um, currently. Now each year they do review that, but it hasn't gone up for a while, um, a few years at least. So that is the only cost we pass on to families and that is charged in the second year and is payable in um, installments. But that is something worth mentioning to you because that is something um, that the local curriculum doesn't have a cost for. But lots of other IB schools, the cost to be a diploma student is significant. And so I think that's really a bonus about being at Marici. Some colleges offer IB only classes. We are a small school and we also um, have quite a small cohort doing the diploma. There are some benefits um, to this as well, but some classes will be with the local curriculum classes. So for example, English is taught with local students curriculum as well as IB diploma students in the same class. There is a higher hour requirement for the diploma students. So there is still some one-on-one -on -one lessons with the teacher, which is IB only sort of lessons where the other students are not in that, that lesson. There are some subjects which are completely standalone. One example of that is world religions. And the decision was made by that because it's there is no overlap in the content at all. So it has been run as a separate class. And whether we had two students or whether we had 20 students, that would always be a separate class. 
It does depend on student demand as to whether we are able to run completely different IB classes. Um, but I think also the current cohort have really enjoyed being in the class with their peers for some of those lessons as well and having a slightly different perspective with that. One of the things I've also tried to provide our students during the diploma is additional support because it is very exam focused um, and exams are stressful for lots of students and adults. Um, I've been running stress better workshops. I've not called them don't stress because sometimes stress is actually good for us, but I've been working through things that can improve stress and try and refocus. So that's um, been through, I think it was like two weeks ago, a session on what to eat to be able to perform well in an exam. Like how can that help your brain um, think and what does that impact in terms of your performance? Um, other things have been how to actually reduce the anxiety surrounding um, upcoming exams. So that's something additional that Marichi does that I've not really spoken to anyone that does that. Um, the range of subjects differs from school to school and also not necessarily just the subjects, the units that, uh, for example, history, there are is a lot of teacher choice in which units the, the teacher can choose to deliver, even though there is a specific curriculum for each unit, the teacher does have that choice um, in different schools. And so you may find that going between different schools, not that you'd want to go anywhere else other than Marici, um, but if you are looking and comparing, that would be something you might see as um, a different option. The range of subjects we have on offer is actually quite vast um, as a new IB school. So um, I've been quite pleased that the school's really supported quite a range of subjects and been willing to run classes, even if they're quite a small uh, number of students. And I've mentioned that world religion is compulsory. We do have small numbers um, in the diploma cohort generally, um, mostly because students haven't come through the middle years program and so they haven't had the benefits of that IB education but those those small numbers does mean more individual time and more one-to-one -one support from those teachers as well in the subject areas and one of the great things compared to other colleges and things we have a great pastoral care support program students are still in a PC group and in their houses and that support is going to continue and as the head of IB, I also keep a bit of an overview of them and check in with them. And uh, if you ask our current students, they are fed very well because often I have to um, have one-to-one -one catch ups and, and sort of extended essay sessions with them and um, I'll provide food. But that's that's not a bribery as such, but uh, they, they do celebrate the fact that they get together to have food together and, and, and to spend some social time as well. So they've enjoyed that. Now, just a couple of things a bit more about the subjects themselves. Uh, students for English can choose literature and language, which has a focus on a wider range of text types. And the other option is the literature, which does have more of a focus on literary works. So students will choose which path where they go. Um, there is some overlap in um, some of the techniques and things that they discuss in those courses, but the literature course does have obviously a more literary focus there. Language acquisition, I've already actually talked through this, so I won't spend too long, but there is a range of levels of language uh, that students can choose for their additional language class. And so the ab initio is, I'm gonna just highlight, no prior experience or very limited previous exposure. I actually had one student who came and said they studied Chinese um, until year two. Um, I'm going to, assume that would be very limited previous exposure but I'd have to have a conversation with that student in terms of the types of learning that she'd covered already because if she actually had quite solid understanding she can't be in a beginner's program and that would have to be a conversation with that student um, before I put her in that course but generally it's quite a clear pathway with languages. This is a bit of a summary of the world religion course and so you can see there, there is a, a broad range of different religious um, areas that are covered. And I've given a bit of an indication of the kinds, kinds of questions that students might uh, discuss in that class. And they tend to find that it's a pretty interesting course, which is good because it is compulsory. 
I also think it's probably one of the easier courses that our students find because of their current exposure to their religion. And some schools do world religion and haven't had that exposure. So I feel like we are at a bit of advantage with that curriculum. So the maths. Now, this is the biggest area I have questions about. And if you'd very if you have very specific questions about your daughter's ability to do math courses, I strongly encourage you to get in touch with Kathleen Garvey, who is our math um, head of faculty, because she is the IB teacher for this, one of them, but she's also the head of faculty, so she can give you a very good explanation. The courses were new in 2020, so there actually isn't any kind of data about how this has gone so far for schools. So this is new to all schools doing the IB and they've streamlined it a little bit. So there's basically two pathways. There's the more pure maths, which is the analysis and approaches. And then there's the math application, which is a bit more applied maths. Universities are still working out what kind of maths they will accept and for which courses. So there is some uncertainty surrounding this. Now we, both pathways have available from the IB, higher level and standard level. However, as a school, we've only put higher level with the analysis and approaches option, because that's the one that if universities are requiring a higher level math, that's the kind of math they will be looking for. Students um, can study, and this is what most students would be choosing, is the standard level maths analysis and approaches course. Um, for a very specific university entry that has maybe a, a specific math requirement. Um, the applications and interpretations course um, is accepted for lots of courses as well, but some universities that may be a bit more prestigious um, have said that they would prefer the analysis and approaches course. So I've managed to find a bit of a table that I've put on the bottom, um, which kind of gives the New South Wales and ACT local curriculum equivalents. Uh, I can't explain to you the difference between methods, math, maths apps and specialists, but Kathleen Garvey definitely would be able to. So regardless of whether your daughter would choose the local curriculum or the IB diploma, her math teacher would be best placed to probably advise on the kind of options for math, um, but Kathleen Garvey specifically for the diploma program as well. So the exciting part, I think, the Theory of Knowledge course. It is a taught course. It's taught for 100 hours over the two years. So it's not considered what we call a standard level course, because uh, standard level courses are 150 hours. So that's really equivalent to about two lessons a week students get for a Theory of Knowledge. And it is assessed based on an exhibition that they put together and an essay on a particular prescribed title that the IB sets. And the good thing about the theory of knowledge course is it actually links in to all of their subject areas. So the middle years program looks a lot at interdisciplinary learning. Well, the theory of knowledge course is kind of the equivalent. It looks at what are the commonalities between those subjects and how we gain and understand knowledge. I just put on there some of the questions that the theory of knowledge course might discuss. So things like, um, I like this one. Can you be embarrassed over something even if no one else knows about it? Or is it a necessary social emotion? So having those conversations and students generally really enjoy that, that in-depth discussion. It hurts their heads. Um, and over the next probably semester, we'll be providing students with opportunities to sit in that class to, if they're interested in the diploma to see what that, that course might look like, and even some of the other subject areas as well. So if your daughter's very excited and, and wants to know about the diploma, then there will be some program put together where students can try out and see what those classes are like in senior school. So that will work with, in collaboration with Renee Taylor, who will work with the, the teachers and how that works, but there will be opportunities for your year 10 students, if your daughter's in year 10, um, to go into a senior class. So that's quite exciting opportunity for them to see what it's like. <laughs> this is uh, a, an example of a IB diploma timetable. So often things I get asked, do we get any freeze? Yes, there are some free periods on a, an IB diploma student's timetable. It is limited, there aren't that many. 
depending on the package your students would choose in the local curriculum, they might have very similar number of free periods, but generally they probably would have a little bit more because they wouldn't have the theory of knowledge course. And I did mention that higher level courses have more face-to-face -face time. And so lo the local curriculum has generally four lessons in one week and four lessons in week two, because we've got the two week timetable. The diploma students generally have five lessons in one week for high level subjects and four lessons in the other week to make up for the additional time hours required. The benefit things like world religions, after May in year 12, that line is free. It is, you know, they don't have to go to that class anymore. So that's additional time that they gain that maybe they felt that they, you know, could do with the extra time. Also those standard level subjects may will say, for example, um, if they had a Chinese class, they don't need to come to lesson four on the Friday because that's, um, they're doing more hours than they need. So there is some flexibility around that. Theory of knowledge is actually included in the student's timetable. Other things that you won't see on this timetable are the meetings that students will be required to attend for their creativity, activity and service, and also their extended essay. So with the extended essay, I have been working with the cohort to see when is appropriate for them. They find that when they have a free period, a common free period, which luckily they do at the minute, that they will meet me during that period and I will deliver the kind of lessons around the extended essay. Students don't have flex in the diploma program. They um, have that theory of knowledge class in the, in the flex period currently, um, although depending on student demand and timetables, that may be placed somewhere else. But currently students don't have flex for senior lessons because we've had to, for the IB, take out a lot of the I've had to calculate the hours and plan for things like swimming carnival being taken out. There's also no requirement for, do, for them to do things like the AST. So they don't need that time that otherwise they would, that time would be used in flex. So they can have their class at that flex period. They do still have long PC and morning PC, which is really important um, and something they'll be still required to attend like every other senior student. So creativity, activity and service, what is it? There are three components that students have to engage in regularly. It's not based on hours, although we do have an hours acknowledgement of students' achievements in our um, Christian service learning program as well. But the IB is all about learning out objectives. So I'll show you those in just a second. But students have to do each of these three components and on a regular basis across the two years. Now, regular is pretty flexible. They don't have to do them all, all at the same time. So if your daughter's already in a sport club, chances are they're already doing their activity. And what they'll need to do is fill in a reflection about their goals, what they're hoping to achieve and how, it's, how they've been progressing. Most students here, because we're a Catholic school, also engage in some sort of service. Lots of these areas can be done during the school day. So there is um, a personal, uh, a CAS project that goes for a month. And our students have been working on lunchtime once a week to knit and get other students to, to knit um, toys for students who go to court, uh, for children who go to court. And so that was their project that they planned together. So it's not that these all have to be done outside of school. Um, and chances are that your daughters are already doing some of those components and they wouldn't have to pick up lots of extra things. So those um, on, points there on the screen, they are the CAS outcomes. So they're nothing onerous. It's things like working collaboratively. They have to demonstrate that they've worked with others and their reflections are how they would do that. And I've mentioned it's not a grade parcel, uh, it's not graded, it's a parcel fail. And so actually, the CAS is probably the most simple thing to engage with if you have a motivated daughter. We also have a CAS coordinator who meets with students and talks to them about their reflections, talks to them about their goals, checks on their progress, and just keeps a general eye so no one can slip through our net without actually engaging in things. So I mentioned about the CAS project, and you can see the photo there. That is of their knitting um, project there that they've been working on. And the project uh, can be done with others, which is really fun. 
This is just an example of a reflection that a student has done um, about their CAS. So students, after engaging in activities, end up completing a reflection. They set goals, they say have they achieved them and how they know that, and they document that. The extended essay. Students, similar to students in year 10, they are provided with an advisor that's personal um, to them. They are offered uh, five hours of formal meetings with their supervisor, and this is a compulsory, compa uh, compulsory part of the diploma program. It is usually in a subject that students are studying, um, just because they have more knowledge in those areas of the kind of, I guess, the language and the themes and the concepts of those subjects, but it can be in a different subject. And is really, I guess you could describe it as a deep dive into that subject. It reflects approximately 40 hours of students' work. Across about an 18 month period, they do submit it earlier than the November. That has to be submitted. Um, I have to submit them by September to the IB in year 12. Um, so we have got more internal deadlines. Students have to get a grade D or a higher to get the diploma. Um, so we do work quite carefully with students to make sure there is a draft they submit, they get feedback. Um, and as I said, there is a supervisor that's appropriately qualified in that subject and can advise students and, and give them some help along the way. So these are just some of the questions that often students or parents have asked me. I've gone through a couple of them. Um, one of the worries uh, that students have had is, will I be separate from the, the cohort of students? Well, that really depends on your daughter. There are many opportunities for them to meet up with their friends. There are many opportunities for them to um, engage in their house group or their PC group um, or at lunchtime socially. They will be in classes most likely with some of their peers in the local curriculum as well. But how much they engage with their peers will be on them. It's, you know, it's really something the current cohort have really gelled together and they spend a lot of time together. But that's not necessary. There are lots of opportunities for students to branch out and be friends with across the different pathways. I guess one of the key things is, will it be a heavier workload? Um, honestly, most likely. That is because if you're in class and you're not paying attention, that content could be on an exam paper. That's quite a big motivation for students to be focused in the class time. And I say that most students should be focused on their class work all the time. With the local curriculum, there's less of an incentive for students to be on task all the time because their learning tends to be semesterized. Um, the best students, the students that are most successful in either pathway are the students that are engaged. So we tend to find we get more motivated students taking diploma program courses compared to the local curriculum. But the local curriculum, if you're going to do well in it, you also have to engage, you have to be motivated. The ATAR doesn't happen without investment in either part, like success doesn't happen without that investment. So it tends to be that we generally have students who are more conscientious that take the IB diploma. However, there are those additional components like the theory of knowledge course and the extended essay that does add to workload. So that is something to bear in mind. We do support students through those processes, but it is more generally for those components. Will the student be able to manage exams? I am not a fortune teller, but there's lots of practice along the way. So I cannot guarantee that any student is going to pass an exam, but what we do do are lots of practice every semester. So it's not a surprise. And as parents, you get your semester based reports still. So it's not like at the end of the two years, they don't do well. And then that's the only time, you know, it's definitely a partnership. And with IB students, I've tended to touch base more with those families to help them um, be more confident because it is quite a new program to the school. So I've been in lots of communication with those families um, and checking in. Some of our IB students um, are in leadership roles in the college. So yes, they absolutely still can be in a leadership role. One of our students does over 30 hours of volleyball e each week in addition to the IB diploma. And I said to her and her family, yes, all of these things are possible, but something has to give. 
And so if your daughter is heavily involved in lots and lots of things, usually something has to give. Um, if they've got big sporting commitments, maybe they need to cut back. If they don't want to cut back on their sport, maybe their grades aren't as great as they could be. Maybe they need to work about priorities and have that conversation regardless of the pathway. You, students can do whatever they like, but if they overextend, and that does tend to be the, more of the problem at the diploma students pathway, um, that is something that, again, if we're concerned, we'd have conversations with you as a family. And even before students enter that um, diploma program, we talk about things like current commitments and workload. Um, I guess one thing I haven't touched on is when can you drop out or join the IB program? So after presenting to the students the other day, they were a bit like, I don't know what to do. I, oh, I'm not sure. They don't have to decide yet. Um, one thing that students have to think about, though, is they can join the BSSS pathway um, really any time before the end of year 11. So they can start the diploma and drop out and still complete their BSSS um, courses. That comes at a cost it does put more pressure on their results to be good in year 12. Uh, something, if, you, if that's a concern, we can talk more about that. And Renee Taylor is really good at, at going through those options if students have started the course for the diploma and then changed their mind. Usually students, um, if they are concerned, we would encourage them to change their mind to term one. So they don't miss out on lots of opportunities to get points in the BSSS system. Students can't really start the BSSS and then join into the diploma program. There's too much content that's covered that is essential that it would just mean that it would be too hard for them to catch up. So we've got a three week window where students, if they start with the BSSS and change their mind, can still join the diploma. Um, but again, the sooner the better in either way, whether you're joining in or, or joining out, we just need that decision as quick as we can. Um, so that, that you get more success in either pathway. Um, students have asked, can you still do an ASBA if you're doing the diploma programme? No, you really can't. There's not any time and the timetable wouldn't allow for that. If you're missing content because you're at an ASBA from a class, um, so an ASBA is an Australian um, school-based apprenticeship. Thanks, really. <laughs> I was like, I can't remember the acronym. Um, and students in the BSSS system may well go and, and do workplace training uh, for some periods in the week. That really isn't an option with a diploma. Um, and there are things in the local curriculum called R units, which get you more points. Whilst you could do an R unit, again, there's very limited time, free time for students to do that. And it actually doesn't give them much benefit in their qualification. I won't talk about the online Spanish, but if students uh, would like to see what that online course is like, then I'm more than happy to sit with them and show them what that online course looks like, but it's very well organized. Um, and there's a mixture of videos and questions and the teacher engages with them. But if you do want to, or even if you as a parent want to see a bit more um, about that online course, then feel free to get in touch with me and I can show you a bit more about that. All right, so I've left this until a little bit later, just because often this is quite exciting to see. The thing is with the ATAR, it, the IB diploma does convert very well into the I, ATAR conversion. The IB have made some changes and they haven't been implemented yet to how the conversion is made. And I've given you a little bit of information on there. So that's not currently been in place, but just to really give you an idea that if you are hearing in any communities about the conversion, the IB has made, sorry, not the IB, UAC, the local Australian university process has made some changes to how they're converting that score. So I mentioned the perfect score is 45. That gives you an equivalent ATAR rating based on the 2020 conversions of 99.95. But look a bit further down, if students are getting 33, they get a score of 90. That's actually really achievable for many students. A score of 33. I remember that data at the beginning said that Australia's, I can't remember, I'm just trying first, average 34. Then if that's the average, 
their their ATAR conversion is is very high. But those numbers don't come just from being in the program. It does require hard work. So whilst the students are really excited, like, oh, it converts so well, that isn't the reason to choose the IB diploma, if that's the only reason, because they have to do it because they have an interest in the subjects and maybe want to study internationally. There has to be other reasons other than it just converting well. But I do think because it is a really big push there, I think that is a really exciting thing for students. But also note that 24 is listed down to 24 because you can not achieve your diploma. So to get your diploma, you must score 24 or above. And there's lots of those other conditions I mentioned that were also required. But 24, if that's the passing rate, that's still an ATAR conversion there of 69.10. That's still a very good conversion. Oh, sorry? Yes, would get you into university. Now, what students were talking about is it is also possible to not do well in the local curriculum. They were quite shocked to hear that you could not pass the diploma, but like, what will we do? You can also get a very, very poor ATAR score, which means that essentially that's not going to be able to be used to get you into university as well. There are many ways into university. The ATAR or the conversion score isn't necessarily the only important thing. Lots of universities also accept course scores now. There, there's lots of push in Australia for universities to recognize those other scores and, and other ways to get into university. So this is not a pass or fail and life's over, but it is worth noting that 24 is the passing number that students have to achieve. I'm just checking the time because I can see that we've got Judith Norris here um, and Judith is one of our current parents. But I'll just skip through the last couple of things before she might um, be able to talk to uh, you about her experience as a parent. Thanks, Judith, <laughs> for joining us. So there's a lot of support for students in the IB Diploma program. And that's a bit of a summary of that. I've gone through some of those things like the Stress Better workshops and um, practice exams, but your daughter's Regardless of the pathway, your daughters are going to be supported by Marucci. Um, and I think that's something really special about our community. You get very good value for money. Our teachers are really invested and very, very pastorally minded. And I think regardless of that pathway, that that supports in place with the benefits of the diploma program. They also have a bit more of a personal check in with things like the fact that I'm enrolled to be able to look after them and check on them as well. They also still have access to people like the head of senior studies. So Damien Nemeth, who's the current head, um, he's, he doesn't not get involved still. So you've got like an extended network of support, which I think is really important. Students have lots of information. They have lots of things planned out for them. So nothing is a shock, hopefully, generally. Um, they will get a course outline, just like they would with other courses. They get a two-year outline, so they know what's coming up and how those dates work. And they also get a two-year calendar for the really key um, assessment dates, things like the internal assessment. So with that in mind, I might um, just pass over to Judith Norris, who, like I said, is a current parent here, uh, just to share some of her insights as to why I guess, how it's going. And just to be really frank and honest, so Judith, I'm gonna hand over to you. Ah, thanks, Natalie. Well, you're in very good hands when you're with Natalie. Now, that'd be one reason why we stay in the IB program. <laughs> no, um, probably coming back to the beginning and hi everyone, I'm really glad to be able to have a chat with you. Um, the, uh, Charlie wanted to do it, our daughter wanted to do it because it was an international program and has international status. And there was the kind of a oh, we can she can travel anywhere with it, but also um, how well received the IB is for university for tertiary study, um, and that's just been affirmed continually by anecdotes of those who are at university saying, well, if you um, have gone through the IB program in eleven and twelve, university is a breeze. So that's very good and that's great, but the 
other parts, uh, so that was the initial reason why, why we did it. We we're really excited that um, Marici being a Catholic school was offering it here in ACT. So being a Catholic school is really important for us and also that it could be that IB was being um, offered. Um, there was a sense of adventure because they were the first group through too. But um, the, the surprises along the way, so I'm actually from school education and, and familiar with HSC and BSSS, but not familiar with IB. So this was sort of a learning experience for me as well. And it has been, uh, for our daughter, it's been a really magnificent learning journey, not necessarily in content, but pushing her to her, um, I guess, to really challenging her and realizing who she is as a person and as a student and, and managing those challenges and regarding uh, strategic choices she needs to make along the way. Um, so it's been a really fantastic um, time for her to discover who she is as a learner. And because it's such a um, and Charlie is an all-rounder, has been in her, her, um, her learning journey. Uh, that said, there are times when she will work out what she's going to put her energy into and not into. Um, so on that, in re with regard to that, it's been a fantastic learning journey for her. Choosing Marichi in terms of IB, um, ha and... I saw Natalie put up there that they, there's an IB support group. The students themselves become that this little group in year 12 call themselves the IB fan. And to have a um, friendship social group, which is situated in learning, um, I think you only get that at university and where you'll gravitate to those people in particular subjects that will help you out. Whereas they're, they're together as a study group and they even they initiate their own study together they go off to the ANU to study they go to the National Library to study and they also work out at times ah this is not a good time for me to go and study with, with each other so I think that that has been a great surprise uh, for the for the students themselves um, but maybe it was also a surprise from Natalie but Natalie has been the key um, pivotal person for the overall support across their subjects and you really don't get I mean you do get it if you have an academic mentor um, but you really don't get that in other um, programs where there's one person who has a keen interest on that student as a as a learner as a whole not in English this science that but really, and then also, in particularly last year through COVID, was actually um, monitoring and nurturing them emotionally through the difficult time, um, and also the difficult time of going into year 11, which is difficult anyway, whether you're doing BSSS, HSC, um, but getting us, this group hadn't the language uh, around IB, so um, how they are this year is just fantastic, and um, they know more what's happening in their program than I do and I'm really like a hawk usually <laughs> to find out how things are um, and that's for another conversation after you decide um, to do IB. So um, doing IB is really fantastic for them but doing IB at Marichi is even more fantastic because you have a coordinator who's really closely monitoring, there are small numbers but also the teachers where they're at professionally is that they really want the students to do well well they would at any time but they also look for ways to make things um, where they're improving themselves as well so that's all I'd like to say at this point. Thank you Judith I really appreciate you taking time in your evening to speak with this group specifically um, and you're right I like the fact that they call themselves the IB firm I think that's a really endearing kind of way I guess that they work together that they are a very supportive network um, so I think that that has been really key for their success it's been key for their mental health I'd say as well just helping each other is school's not always easy as your daughters would already know all of you um, and finding ways to work through that not just stop and give up finding 
building resilience. And I think that's something the IB Diploma Programme does exceptionally well. So it, I, Judith has been, I guess, pioneering um, in trusting her daughter with us um, as that's their, this is going to be the year 12 is going to be the first cohort going through that process of examinations. So I'm super excited and um, they'll be ready. So they've had lots of time and they're, they're, they're amazing students. And I think that's also because of the design of the IB program in general. It's designed to produce well-rounded holistic students which is really awesome. So with that, oh, I just need to get my screen sharing going again, sorry. Essentially, there's only a few things um, to go through that I wanted to, um, sorry, I can't do two things at once. <laughs> Great, a couple of things to go through finally, but what next? I guess if your daughter's in year 10, then, um, Transition week will be a big week for them, uh, where they will get lots of input, not just about uh, the diploma program, but about career pathways, about the local curriculum and lots of other things as well. There'll be still some more information about subjects then for the diploma, but that will also include lots of other information. Have a chat to your daughter about what career pathways might they want to do in the future. If they've got a very specific pathway, have a little look at university courses and what those prerequisites or required things are that they might need to get into those courses. Because often for lots of courses, there aren't many prerequisites with the exception of things like medicine and law. Uh, even law, there's usually a, a level required in terms of ability, but not necessarily subject selections. But um, have a chat to her, maybe she has no idea and that's okay as well, in which case the diploma program might be a great option. Um, continue talking about things that maybe your daughters can do to prepare. So one of the things we tend to suggest to students in year 10 is they should really be doing 10A maths um, because that is very good preparation for the diploma program maths. So if your daughter's maybe not in that, what else could she be doing to improve in that area? Um, and I'm more than happy to meet with you personally, to meet with your daughters and to, to have more of a conversation about the IB diploma if you still have questions, because often lots of those questions are very personal in nature. So I'll be looking to offer some drop-in sessions. Um, and if there's one-to-one -one appointments that you'd like to make with me, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, there is a bit of a, a link there. I don't know if you can see it. If you find that you do have some questions that you still would like answered, um, then after today, uh, you're very welcome to submit them to the ideas board. And what I will do is then respond to those in a what's on and answer those questions generally. But that's not really the place for anything private or personal. Um, those sorts of things have a chat to me and we can catch up. But other than that, that brings the kind of formal presentation to a close. I'm more than happy to stay online and answer any questions if you have any um, like things that you'd like to speak to me about personally. But other than that, thank you for joining me this evening. And I really appreciate your time, exciting times ahead.